So we can complain about the linebacker depth on this team forever, right? Uh, kind of the same thing that the Bills did with the quarterback position. They really didn't put many things in Tremaine Edmonds' way. It was apparent that he was going to be your middle linebacker. I have no idea where he's going. Yeah. So let's say you want to bring in a inside linebacker via free agency, right? Let's take a look at what those options look like. It is we? the season of giving, so come on, let's see it. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Hit the bell. Hit the bell. I know you have a contention for uh, team or players formerly um, within the division. But we're gonna exclude. We're gonna include them for, for sake of argument. Okay, you ready? Avery Williamson, inside linebacker from the Jets. Preston Brown. Vincent Ray. Manti Te'o. What the hell did you just say? Uh, Craig Robertson, Will Compton, Denzel Perryman, Nate Palmer, Bruce Carter, Kelvin Shepard. Um, it gets pretty thin up in this. Come on back. Kevin Minter. Loved Minter before last year. Yeah. He's in Tampa right now. I mean, that's not exactly the best fit for him. Kwan Alexander's in Tampa as well. He's going to be a free agent. Um, it gets it gets pretty thin after that. I mean, like, crazy. Really bad. Thing. So the the best middle linebacker out there for the Bills is on IR right now. <laughs> Milano. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean, right? So that's brutal. Yeah, it's it's a very thin inside linebacker. So what point. you're saying very is thin. trying to address the middle linebacker position by a free agency in order to push Edmonds outside. Edmonds outside. Or at least at least grant some depth, right? It's not going to happen, right? I, nope. nope. I'm not I'm nope. not loving any of this. What about Sanford? You know, he didn't do enough for you? No. I'm just saying. I'm just putting it out. He's on the roster right now for a reason. Yeah, no. He did not. He did not. No. He didn't wow you? He didn't have a wow, wow not, factor? Did, certainly did not wow me. Um, I mean, it has. To, it brings yourself to ask the question, what would what would this team look like if Preston Brown was back in the middle? The like Bills got rid of him, so I doubt he's wanting to come back. He signed a one-year deal. We really thought he was going to get paid. It's like getting really divorced and remarried. I really anticipated <laughs> Preston Brown getting paid this offseason. He ended up signing a one-year deal with, with Cincy. But um, he's going to be a free agent this offseason. What does it look like if, from a from a, a, an alignment standpoint? What was it about Preston Brown that didn't work that saw his exit? Was it the contract? Was it they knew, they targeted, and said, we have the ammunition to get Allen. We think we have the ammunition to get Edmonds just as long as nobody – jumps ship and does something crazy to trade up to get him, we think we can get both of them. Do you think it was the thought that they could get that linebacker spot in the draft that was the reason that Brown go? Or was there something up with Brown that they said, you know, schematically he's not a fan? Well, I mean, he's so productive. It's behind hard, it's the scenes. Yeah, but the thing was, he was very productive both in a 3 4 or 4 3. Yeah. We thought he was going to be asking too much. Yeah. Um, and he didn't. He didn't get a lot. He had a one year what? It wasn't much. One Seven? Six? Yeah, it, wa it wasn't much. I'll, I'll look it up real fast. He, he'll actually be cheaper this year. He's going to be, what, 27? Uh, yeah, he's 26 right now. He'll be okay. 27. 27-year-old, depth linebacker signing. He was signed initially by a different oh. regime. Oh, oh, oh. What? five mil. That's chump change. Five mil. That's Yeah, that's garbage money. So the 6.4 you save with cutting McCoy, you'll be able to pay him? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm kidding. He I'm wasn't. Just... He wasn't a bad fit for this system. No, because he's played. Like I said, he's played in both three, four, and four, three. He's a guy that's pretty versatile. Uh, I don't know. You look at uh, aside from the mistakes. What could he have done this year that Edmonds is doing? I mean, one of the strengths that Edmonds has is the fact that he's a really good pass rusher. And you're not... You get him inside on a guard, and it's just a bad matchup. You're asking him to work in too tight a space. It's just a bad matchup. For Edmonds. For Edmonds. Yeah. You're not asking Brown to blitz. I know. That's the th that, that takes the element of 
that out of it. Right. All right. And um, and for and you look at it, four million dollars. Would I pay four million? Would I be okay? to sign a player for four mil to move Edmonds outside and if Preston Brown gets hurt you have to move Edmonds back inside I'm okay with that yeah but the thing is he's not he's still learning that's like trying to say I mean it's a stretch but it's the equivalent of saying you know what I like Allen as a receiver I don't like him as a quarterback yet <laughs> he's still developing as a middle linebacker you know what I mean I understand I understand where you're coming from I, and I agree I want Edmonds on the outside but you got to just relegate to yourself to that. He's going to be inside. Unless there's a guy in this draft that unbelievably is the prototypical guy they want as a middle linebacker. I can't see them taking a middle linebacker two drafts in a row. You know, middle linebackers are always like crazy I know. overweight. They're, they're, you know, I mean, they'll they're be able to get one, the get one in the second. I'm not even kidding. They'll get one in the second because it's a very heavy draft. All the offensive talent will get pushed down to them in their first pick. Yeah. And then they'll be able to get somebody with their second pick. But knowing how old the kid is in his production, what could be what could he eventually be? Because if you move him to outside, draft the guy moving outside, you can't ever move him back. I don't care what you're what you're trying to do. You'll never move him back to the inside. Because you drafted a guy to replace him inside. So now, well, yeah, that's I'm, noodling up there. But that's there. what I mean. If you sign Preston Brown, and and you know, if you sign Preston Brown, it's not the same thing, right? Because just long as the defensive coordinator doesn't change, it's the same language, right? It's not like it's not like Edmonds will be missing out on what's happening. It's the same language. What are you chuckling about? Because it's it's Preston Brown. You got rid of Preston Brown or didn't yeah. re-sign him and then drafted Edmonds. Now you want to sign Brown. That's like telling your girlfriend, hey, we're breaking up. And then talking to somebody new. And then that somebody new sees you talking to your ex-girlfriend again. <laughs> That's not going to work out well for your new girlfriend. <laughs> if you keep talking to your ex, they're both going to be pissed off at you. <laughs> and then when it comes contract time, both of them will leave. <laughs> I am just saying... If I'm looking at trying to put this defense on the next level, right? Because defense is it's a playoff caliber defense. But mm -hmm. today, you saw the middle of that defense just get striped against the Patriots. They knew mm -hmm. they could exploit the middle of that defense. And they, like, here's the thing that bothered me. It was really the first time all season, right, mm -hmm. that I saw Star singled in one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. And they still controlled the inside gaps. Well, they've always had a line in protected Brady. I, I, I understand. understand. I understand that as well. But the thing that we talk about all the time, we talk about the offense, moving parts, doing different things, mm -hmm. and we tend to focus on that. Like, listen, all right, you're 4-9. Why don't you just try some new stuff or try this or try that, try this guy, moving parts, blah, 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 all this other stuff. What, what makes you think the defense isn't doing that too? Well, maybe they're trying new things. Maybe they're trying new I mean, we even saw it in Miami. They switched Milano and, and, yeah, and Edmonds. Because, right, but that tells me that they are looking to try Edmonds in other places. So the fact that they are going to shop out there for an inside linebacker, I don't think it's a far-fetched concept. And we talked about this on an episode already this week, that if you look at the draft, they drafted talent and said, you know, maybe we're going to we're draft talent and then we'll just do whatever fits their abilities best. Edmonds is a really good pass rusher. Yes. So why aren't you leveraging that? Because by putting him in, you, when you put him in the one or the three gap, and ask him to go inside, that's not leveraging his abilities the best way as possible. That is uh, freeing up Jerry Hughes to get one-on-one -on -one, because that's who ultimately you want to get to the quarterback. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you if you, if you you show blitz or have Edmonds try to blitz the A-gap, they have to adjust the blocking protections to slide to the middle, mm -hmm. and then he's wound up on the outside. Mm -hmm. That's why you do it. Lining up Edmonds on the outside and switching him in Milano and Miami, that's just to create confusion with the, with the offense. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, he's coming, and he doesn't come. You slip protection that way, he's not going. So then the other side opens up. It just so, bothers me to see a team not use a player's best abilities. That's, I think that's something he has to develop. He knows how to do those things already. you got to develop yeah. him as a middle. Sure. And I'm, not, and I'm not saying that the Bills aren't and haven't tried to do that. 
because they certainly have. They've given him plenty of opportunity to develop. But, 14 games? Yeah. But, you like the guys that talk about E.J. Manuel not getting enough games. But, you know, when you see him just start biting like crazy again, you know, it's frustrating. It's fru- it, it, don't makes, know it makes you look was. at the long It makes you look at the long game. Okay. We don't know what the scheme was coming into today. You're right. You're now, right. Listen, we'll have the outsides covered. Mm-hmm. If they go gap, you go. But for four million dollars for one season, a two-year deal, three a three-year deal at twelve million dollars, I think they back up that linebacker position after what happened to that position this season. You can't go. I, they went cheap this season because a lot of dead money. They did what they could afford. That's it. I don't think they're going to do that next season. So still has four, to be a friendly for three year, three year twelve million with a three million dollar signing bonus. You can walk away from that deal at any. You time. won't sign it. He won't sign it. Three years, the, be, the some of the best years he's going to have. It takes him to 30. Yeah, exactly. He signed a one-year deal at 25. Thinking that he could prove himself to get a four- or five-year deal worth about $7 million a year. Cincinnati's terrible, and he's looking bad. I know, but that wasn't his thought going into it. Well, I know. That's what I'm saying. Sacrifice now to get paid later. That's what he was thinking. He's not going to take a three-year, $12 million deal from the Bills only at the end of that, knowing that the kid's going to take over for him and he's going to be 30 years old out of work. If he watches the game today, he'll sign that deal. <laughs> he goes back and watches that tape of Edmonds against the Patriots. He's like, yeah, 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 sign that deal. We'll call you're, you're a savage. 